Hello everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Anton Hadak. Um, I'm a software developer at Senke Institute, Cambridge. And uh, I would like to tell you about the web application I've been developing this year. This is a web interface uh, for running Nextflow on Kubernetes. Uh, so I'm a part of uh, the informatics support group for Cellular Genetics program. We support about 180 people at Celgen program and uh, we do both upstream and downstream analysis as well as maintaining uh, infrastructure and web service deployments. Uh, Okay, sorry for that. Uh, okay, so it, it loads, but but with parts. Um, so since the inception of our program, Nextflow has been uh, the core of our pipeline services. Uh, the pipeline we run the most is uh, RNA Seq, which is based on the NFCore pipeline. Uh, we also run Tracer and Bracer pipelines, data sharing, and some of the end of core pipelines. And um, once we started observing a growing number of users who want to start Nextflow, but not necessarily want to deal with the command line and uh, the, the execution environment, we started uh, thinking about the web interface for, for Nextflow. Uh, and uh, observing from this Nextflow camp, I see I counted almost about four four talks in which this topic is um, is mentioned, so the time for this idea has come. Um, and uh, yeah, so we wanted to make this uh, an easy process and uh, so that to give power to the users and uh, to reduce our support load as well. Um, yeah, this is just a heavy image that uh, takes time to load. Um, so here is our computational setup. Traditionally, our main source, uh, our main computational environment was uh, an HPC uh, cluster managed by an LSF uh, scheduler. Uh, but about two years ago, we started moving to an OpenStack cloud. Uh, and now we try to run everything there. And we use Kubernetes as our interface for all things related uh, to the cloud. Uh, we try to run everything in containerized environments. So we host uh, multiple web services. And uh, that's why we decided that Kubernetes will be our, our um, backend for, for running Nextflow uh, in the web interface. Um, so Nextflow Web uh, started as a project uh, in, in, in March 2019 and has been sporadically developed throughout this year uh, as a collaboration with GenServe, which was an internal Senke project for data import and uh, pipeline uh, execution. Uh, and we inherited their stack, which was Python, uh, Flask for microservices, Celery, Redis, PostgreSQL. Um, this, uh, serv uh, this service was meant to be open source. Uh, the components I've been developing are open sourced already. The GenServe components are uh, still under some uh, internal policy issues, but they will be open sourced. Uh, we did look into other alternatives, but uh, they either no, had no Nextflow support or they were commercial solutions. So one of them is Dolphin Next, which will be presented tomorrow. Um, so here is um, an architecture of of the application. It has three main parts. Uh, the first one is uh, the client side part, uh, the front end. Uh, the second one is a generic ab abstract layer for running all kind of all kind of jobs, to say so. And the third one is the actual Nextflow execution of, 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 of work, of pipelines. So um, the user interaction with the service is the following one. 
Uh, once the user accesses the web page rendered by the content application, workflows from the flow services get, get loaded into the application. Once the user fills in the parameters and hits the submit button, uh, it goes to the API gateway here, uh, gets scheduled in the job component uh, with the, all the information tracked in the database. Uh, then the command line is uh, the command line is uh, generated in the server application and uh, is scheduled to run on the on the worker. Um, the worker is essentially a Nextflow. Uh, is a is a Kubernetes pod with Nextflow running on it, just like regular Kubernetes run of Nextflow, and uh, all of the processes have get their own pods. Once uh, the workflow is finished, uh, the results get pushed to S3, uh, and uh, this, the job status is being propagated to, to the odd job and then to the user. Uh, the Kubernetes setup uh, that we have is based on KubeSpray, which is a, one of the canonical ways to set up Kubernetes. And, uh, the the, gen, uh, the general idea was to not have any additional um, setup necessary. So if you can run Nextflow on, Kuber, uh, on Kubernetes, you can run Nextflow web. Uh, this is has this has a traditional setup of uh, each service having a deployment resource and a service. Uh, we use ClusterFS as a storage. Uh, it it proved to be not very performant comparing to the farm storage, which is Luster. Uh, and we uh, will we are exploring different uh, a different storage solution to imp improve performance. Uh, the job status is tracked through the file system. Although recently I discovered that we can get a much more fine granulated uh, status reports with the uh, web log feature, and also I see that Nextflow Tower can fit can fit here very nicely uh, in the future once once it has a, a stable API. Uh, so the new pipelines uh, are added through uh, submitting a YAML manifest, uh, which was inherited from the GenServe system. That's why it has some some fields unrelated probably to uh, to the execution to the next execution of the service. But uh, the interesting part is the parameter section, which was reworked uh, with uh, NF Core parameter schema that nicely. Um, helps uh, helps uh, applications to understand how to render parameters um, in the in the front end and gives some more additional information that cannot be captured in a regular Nextflow uh, workflow. Uh, and then it's uh, then it's uh, a regular command line is generated in the in the server and submitted to the worker. Um, a quick static demo. Um, Users get signed in and uh, registered, and then signed in uh, to the platform. Uh, then they get uh, a choice of pipelines that they can run. It can be lots of pipelines. Uh, once they select the pipeline, uh, they fill in the parameters uh, that uh, that are described in this parameter schema. Uh, they can upload files if they contain contain sample IDs, for example. And once the once the workflow is submitted, um, uh, it, it it changes. You, you can track the status of the of the workflow, and once it's completed, uh, you get a link uh, to results, which are pushed to S3 to an S3 bucket. Uh, so the near future plans include um, having a better S3 client for uh, for more convenient downloads and uh, better uh, authorization. Um, Email notifications, uh, having an admin interface to stop workflows and manage users, and to um, expand the collection of available workflows. Uh, I would like to thank my team and the GenServe team, and uh, uh, I would like to hear your thoughts and ideas about this. Thank you. No, no, no. It's it's just our custom format to describe to describe a workflow in our system. So it, it's it's not Kubernetes related. But are you planning it to, to make it a custom resource different? Well, uh, well, right now, maybe there is some value in it. 
if if the, if if you can if you can show me how can this be better, that I I would think about it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that, that function, you have a function there which essentially takes that and the parameters and generates the command line. Yeah. Do you find that quite stable? Uh, well, uh, why, why would it cause, cause troubles? So, it's, it's, so essentially it just maps the default options and create the command line that you would otherwise write by hand. Uh, well, there is a predefined config for so users should not so it should be uh, curated by the administrator. So the administrator should know that these config options are best. So, for example, user doesn't specify resource option for like uh, RAM for for the pipeline. Uh, email says built-in for that already in the next door. So if you already have an email address, it's just an extra authority. And you run next day and it should send emails, as long as it's a, a mail server which can be used. Cool, thank you. I will probably reuse it. So, yeah. And yeah, one of the reasons why I wanted to present it was um, to hear maybe maybe there are some other efforts to build Nextflow web interface. And if so, uh, there is no, no reason to, st to stay separate. Yes, so. Yeah. How would it interact with Tower? Uh, so Tower will be as um, uh, as a job monitoring service. You essentially once you start a, a pipeline, you can see all the individual steps uh, through Nextflow Tower, and also it can be used for report uh, for checking the status of the pipeline. So once the pipeline is finished, you check Tower directly. Not you don't check the logs of, of Nextflow as I do here. Yeah, no, but sure, in the next step, there is going to be also what um, a launch interface for pipeline. But I think with a bit different approach. Can you go back to this overview of the slide, this uh, schema slide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a couple of workers there as, uh, as pods. Are they stand initialized and then standing workers, or do you create those pods for every, for every job? Uh, so this is just uh, this is just one worker um, a pod and these ones are uh, are dynamically created. For, so for each individual job, for each individual job yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So salary here is, is is in between managing this worker and it 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 pushes tasks uh, into the worker so. Can they actually use it as a GUI to create uh, some running that uh, next next build work? So once again, can they use it as a GUI to simply export the next build file and run it on something else? Uh, to export the next load file, I would. I, I thought about importing the next load file. No. Uh, so I think I think. Uh, Importing the Nextflow workflow would be much easier than writing the Nextflow uh, this YAML file. If uh, but um, th this was just the way to interface this with the with the Genser system. So maybe maybe if I were um, if I were rethinking it, maybe maybe there would be an approach to import the uh, Nextflow workflow. Yeah. Just an idea. Something you can do to tidy up the command a little bit. The parameters you can save in the JSON file, and then just give that JSON file to the next one, and then the next one command is much more short. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I didn't know that you can feed a JSON to the next one. I guess some people want to be able to visualize. You know, they want to see the command line. They maybe you need to display it. Yeah, maybe display that JSON. Yeah, if Nextflow Tower, for example, can render the, the, I think it renders the command line that yeah. started the, the workflow. It also renders the parameters as well, so if you have an editor JSON, we can see it there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.